back to Saturday. Uh, really good win, obviously, for the program, for these kids. Uh, really exciting. Um, but that's over, right? Um, said it would be 24, 48 hours, somewhere in there. We, we flushed that. And I and, uh, thought we had a pretty good Tuesday practice. Um, you know, they do a lot offensively that you got to prepare for, a lot defensively you got to prepare for. So um, big mental day for us, and, and uh, we got to be sharper tomorrow. When you said a 24 to 48 hour rule, when did it end? Do you think? Did it actually go the full 48, or did you guys, did you guys get back to work quick? Saturday, Sunday. No, it probably went a full 48 this week. Yeah, that was, that was a big one for for everyone involved, and and um, you know you got to enjoy it. You got to enjoy those moments like that, and and uh, you know first time in a, in a long time that's happened, and first time we get to go to a bowl, so that was uh, that's huge. And and um, but the good thing is our opponent. You know that we're doing. They've they've done it a lot of times, right? So they got their six win. It's just another, um, you know, day for those guys. And so we got to flush it and, and, and get back to work and and um, get ready for this game. You know, talking about T.J. Finley and, and his his big performance on on Saturday after after kind of letting some turnovers go yeah. the previous two games. How big was that for him? Does he seem like he's a little lighter, a little looser after a big game like that? Yeah, I think so. And that and that's why you know talk to the staff and, and we talk to everyone involved. Now we get to coach these guys harder. Now we get to uh, Tuesday when we're out there, we're coaching these guys harder than we did last week. Um, you know, we got that six win. Uh, we got that momentum going. Now now is the opportunity as a new staff, we get to coach them harder. And um, I think I think we're getting there. Um, you know, we still got a ways to go, but but we're really getting there. And I thought TJ played his best game for sure. He, he played a heck of a game and used his legs and made good decisions and, and uh, He's a he's a big time player. Coastal Carolina this week. They've yeah. been without their starter Grace from Call the last couple of weeks, but they've still rattled off some wins. Yeah. What is your assessment of this offense, even without Grace yeah. McCall? We don't even know if it's going to be Guest or yeah. Vasco or what the deal is. What are you What are you making of it? Yeah, I think uh, credit to that their staff. Um, first and foremost, you know, you lose the. I don't know how many times he's won the Player of the Year in this award, but you know, uh, two, three times, whatever it is, and to go out there and still win games without him. Um, you know, they, they have a really good coaching staff and, and think very highly of those guys. And not only to use your backup and then go out there, lose your backup and go out there with your with your third guy and go out there and, and have a career career night. So, um, you know, we got to prepare for all three. You don't know exactly what's going on. Um, you know, if, if, if Grayson will play or, or the other guy or um, the, the last guy. So uh, we'll see kind of what happens. Got to prepare for all of them. and, and um, It'll be a big test for us. What are the, some of the challenges when you kind of don't know who that starting quarterback is, even though you, you've got plenty of game yeah. film on, on both of these backups? Yeah, um, I want to say plenty. You got, you got a little bit of film on them. Um, you know, their, their offense is going to be a little – you're always going to tailor your offense to your quarterback, so it's going to be a little bit different with each quarterback. Um, obviously, you see the last quarterback come out there and rush for 180, throw for 180. I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive. He's got long speed. He's 6'3", 220 pounds. And, and, but the other guy came in and did a two-point play. So he's available, but he's not playing. So you got to get ready for both of those guys. And then Grayson with the, with the head deal, you, you're always going to be very cautious. And I'm sure they'll want him to get a full week of practice and then you know, see if he can go Saturday, maybe dress out, emergency type of situation, or maybe he's ready to go. I don't know. But um, that'll be for their – for him and their doctors to decide, but we we got to prepare for all three and get ready for all different offenses and and um, but I think I think we have a pretty pretty good idea uh, what's going to happen on defense. What are, what do the chunk to clears kind of look like on defense? The what? The chunk to clear. Oh, is that out there? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right. Um, they're really good. They give you multiple looks. Um, they're really well coached. They got good players. Um, you know. I think uh, we have to be prepared, almost kind of like their offense. We got to be prepared for different looks. They do different deal. I think they they're more of a game plan um, operation rather than hey, this is what we do. We're going to line up and run our defense. Um, where Troy's more of like hey, you know, this is what we do. You know, everyone's going to have a flavor of the week, but they're they're much more of a a true game plan operation. Um, so once again, we'll have to come out and see exactly. You know what they do and and um, how their how their plans to attack. As good thing is with our tempo and our splits, you kind of get a good idea of what you're going to get pretty soon. You know, with Tim Beck being the coach over there, just kind of what do you know about him? Just kind of 
yeah. your relation, if there is any. With not him. not a not a uh, a lot of background there. You know, I think I met him for the first time at the the head coach's deal, and and great person. Um, you know, Herb Hand, I worked with at UCF, um, always spoke really highly of him. Talked about how good of a coach he was, and and um, you know, I know he's been in a lot of big time programs, and and you don't just you know get to those jobs by accident. And and credit to what those guys. I think for me, like just looking at them. They've, they've been the triple option for so long, right? And then you bring in a whole new different culture, a whole new different offense, a whole new different way of doing things, and they're still rattling off wins. To me, that's a great job by the coaching staff because it's tough. You know, I remember when I went to Hawaii and they'd been run and shoot, run and shoot, run and shoot, and then you come in and you tweak things a little bit. There's always going to be some, some resistance there, especially when you win. Like when you come into a place that's losing, it's a little bit easier because, you know, I wouldn't be here, you know, right, if, if you won. Where those guys, they won, and that guy got another job. So they, they brought in a whole new coaching staff, whole new scheme, whole new culture to a winning culture. So, that's that man, that's tough. And to see what they're doing right now is is uh, pretty impressive. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a big time. That's what I told these guys. I mean, this, to me, Coastal is the, the last five, ten years, that's the team. Like, when I got this job, you, you circle that thing because it's kind of like playing a Boise State. It's kind of like playing a UCF. I mean, those guys have, have – I mean, they've dominated for a long time, and um, you know, so it's always it's always exciting to go and play those. And time. I mean, they got like a, uh, is it turquoise? Is that what the the correct color? It's a turquoise field. Like that. I mean, that's different. You know, so this that's what college football is all about: going and playing environments like that. And and um, so it's going to be quite the challenge. And and um, we got to make sure we get our guys prepared. You know, Coach, over the last month, you've been at home, uh, three straight home games with a bye week in between. I think this is your first flight since the conference opener to Southern Miss. How does it feel to kind of get that change back in the routine where you're on the road flying out like you are? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously we, we played pretty well at home, you know, really well this last week. But then the other games, we just played okay. So, I mean, I think we've played really well on the road. This, Besides the Lafayette, like the last quarter, you know, I thought we played really well um, on the road this year. So, um yeah, I think it's it's good. I, I like I like playing on the road. To be perfectly honest with you, I mean, obviously you prefer to play at home, but getting to play in those those stadiums like that, I'm sure they're going to pack that place out, and it's going to be a great atmosphere. And and uh, those are those are exciting games. Getting back to last week, uh, you know, the win came after a loss the week prior, and all three times the season you've come up short. You come back the next week, playing some really good football. Um, what is it about this team's ability to bounce back? Yeah, I think it's the the mindset of the the players, the mindset of the coaches, and and uh, you know I think we we work all off season, and and um, a lot of it's a mindset, you know. Uh, and that's why I told the team this morning, you know, you're always going to have bumps and bruises this time of year. Most teams get worse. This is about the time of year most teams get worse, and uh, we got to continue to get better. You, know, you you go back to last week and you know after you win the game you know the celebration on the field and obviously an historic moment for so many people involved with the program and I know that you hadn't been here you know for some of the the tough years but did it feel like a a corner turning moment for the program with what happened this past week yeah I think so um, I really do and and uh, I think it was it was um it was probably emotional for a lot of people. You know, it was a, probably a little emotional for me on the sideline just because, you know, you go through the interview process and you hear all this and you hear all that, and then you go out there and you get that sixth win, you know, in year one. I mean, that was that was emotional for me and the staff. And I think the players, we have so many new players where it was – it was exciting and it was fun, but for them, it probably wasn't as big as a deal as, as it was to the probably the coaches and the administration. Maybe some of the guys that have been here for a long time, um, they, they understand. But a lot of these guys, their first year, like, to be perfect honest, I'm going to tell you something that, that I'm gonna, I probably shouldn't tell you this. I, I didn't know I'd never gone to a bowl when I took this job. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. Didn't do my research. I told you. when I got, They said, you want this job? Yep. <laughs> Boom. Signed on the dotted line. You know, so one of those deals where, you know, it, it, it was uh, when I heard that, I was like, oh, all right, maybe, you know. <laughs> but it was uh, we, we got it done, and that's the biggest deal. I've been eligible twice before, just didn't get the invite. Kind of yeah. feels like it's gonna happen. Yeah, I still don't understand that part either. That I'm a little. I don't. I don't. I'm a little. All I know is in 2023, you won the sixth game. You're going to a bowl. So we're going to a bowl game this year. I mean, I hate to put that, too, but it was about. <laughs> I mean, you win six games, you're you're going. So that, but that's not the goal. You got to win more than six. Can anyone explain to me why how that happened? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I could tell you, I could tell you, Coach Moore, you know, when he's 
All right, yeah, I, yeah. Well, I know Brant could fill it in more, but from my understanding, too many teams got bowl eligible that year. Bobcats were one of the few left out of the party. Gotcha. There were some reasons. Was it like an marks. FCS? Too many FCS games? No, was it just not, there, were, there was three less bowl games. So gotcha. Six less teams got in. We were gotcha. only seven with team probably in a long time. We saw that we had four bowl ties. Uh, gotcha. Six, seven, something gotcha. like that. There you go. Um, Make sure we get this on the record. Yeah, come on. <clears throat> so it. Texas State had beaten Arkansas State that year. Um, and both teams finished with seven wins, but the Go Daddy Bowl took Arkansas State gotcha. because the Red Wolves had been the previous four years. Mm. And so the bowl committee knew that their fan base was going to travel, travel. And, and show. Gotcha. And uh, Texas State also finished with a better record than South Alabama, uh, who, who finished 6-6. Six and six, But there was a new bowl that year, the Camellia Bowl in Montgomery, mm which was in South Alabama's yeah, backyard. Sense, yeah. So there was some hesitation from some of those Sunbelt Bowl tie-ins. Would Texas State travel? So they got shut out of the Sunbelt Bowl tie-ins, and the other bowls got filled out. You know, there wasn't, weren't as many then as there are now. And so it was extremely disappointing back then. And personally, I feel it, it kind of set the program back, and they didn't fully recover until last Saturday. Yeah, that's, that, that's great information. I appreciate that. That was good. Well, we're going to travel this year, guys, so that'll be good. And also, Fran was the coach, and uh, they didn't—they don't like him too much in Alabama. That was part of the reason. There you go. <laughs> you can cut that one. Is that like? You can is, cut is that, that one. Like a conspiracy theory right there. <laughs> oh yeah, you know it. Tin, yeah. tin foil hat. Tin foil like hat it. on that one. I like it. Uh, but and Ashanta Clear is a chicken. It's a rooster, by the way. Okay. Mythical. Is it mythical? It's from yeah. Jeff, Jeffrey Chaucer's Jeffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales. Oh. It's a mythical bird. Yeah. There you go. I just know. I just know they're really good. And they're, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I just know they're really good. I don't know what their mascot is, but they're good. You know, last week we saw Connor Fox get in the end zone. First touchdown in a few years for, for Texas State. Yeah. Uh, you know, it seems like he's a guy who we saw him early at Baylor and he got injured, he came back. What, what does he mean for this offense? What what kind of – what does he change out there? Just that yeah. even if it's a little three-yard touchdown. Talk yeah, about no, that. he's a, he's a big-time player, and, and we knew that, you know, once we got him. Um, just got to make sure and keep on developing and, and, and coming along. And great player, great leader, great person. And uh, that's the kind of guys you want here. You know, coming up for, for this week, you were, you were talking about their, their offense and how they kind of their, – their scheme is almost dependent on what your scheme is defensively. Does that change up what you do, knowing that – they're going to just respond to, to what you give them on You're the You're talking field. about their defense versus our offense? Mm -hmm. No, uh, vice versa. Their offense. Their versus offense versus our defense. Mm -hmm. I think it's more predicated on who their quarterback is going to be, you know, because you you got to work those things and you got to figure out, okay, what what is this quarterback really good at and, and what is he comfortable with? And um, so those, those are the things that, you know, when you talk about a lot of game film, there's some game film, but obviously there's more on Grayson because I'm sure just like when I went to you, they're, they're going to incorporate some things that they did previously at Coastal with Grayson where, you know, and, and combining it with what they do offensively, um, kind of in that bridge year. And then and then you see these other quarterbacks get in here and it's, all right, what, what does this guy do really well within our system? What does this guy do really well within our system? And let's put this guy in the, the best opportunity to, to go out there and win games. And, and that's, what, that's what I think they did such a good job of the last, you know, two weeks or whatever it is that when you have those backup quarterbacks, so those guys went out there and performed and, and, and you're winning games in this conference with, with backup quarterbacks is, I mean, that's, that's tough to do. You know, with this defense, a very solid perform, especially like how high powered Georgia Southern is. How, how do you feel like this defense is finally finding its footing, especially late yeah. in the season? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, I think in this league, though, you got to bring it every week, and everyone, you know, has different schemes and, and different uh, strengths and weaknesses. And I think, you know, kind of what Coach Packy does and that, that staff, I mean, they do a good job of game planning week to week, too. And, and we're always going to have a, a good flavor of the week. And, and um, you know, same thing, attack those things that, that they do well and um, know what the, the previous opponent did to you and, and know that they're going to run some of those things and, and work on those things and, and just being real with yourself. And, and, um, and it changes every week to week, you know, with your injuries too, who's available. So um, I think our defensive staff does a really good job. I think we've got some talented players that are playing hard and inspired, and, and um, we got to continue, continue that if we want to win. You know, speaking on, on, I asked about Fox earlier. Is he playing this week? It looked like he got banged up, but that may have been Latham number nine. I wouldn't no, be sure. No, Con Connor will be a week to week type of deal. Um, you know, he was out there today, so we'll see. Um, 
kind of kind of more of a you know we'll just kind of have to see wait and see on that i don't want to say yes or no and then you know not happen about latham, I know he's latham. About he'll be week to week as well same type deal